Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the People Person Podcast brought to you by Good Time Media. I am your host, Wyatt Metzger, as always. And today we have a long awaited interview. I feel like this has kind of been like months in the making, but here we are. I'm joined today with Justin from Justin Takes the Batch. Justin, how are you doing today? It's almost Friday, almost the weekend. How are you feeling? I'm doing well. I'm I'm very discombobulated because, um, you know, Monday was obviously a holiday. And so I just feel like this week was uh, a just like cluster of everything, you know? Yeah, I've been a day off like all week. I've always yeah. thought, like I, I thought the 4th of July was Sunday. And so I've just been a day behind. But then yeah. the weekend kind of snuck up on me. So now it's tomorrow's Friday. So it's like, all right, sweet. Let's get yeah. ready to roll. When you said tomorrow was Friday, I was like, I, I what it is like, I, <laughs> yeah. I honestly forgot. Like I, I just did not retain that information. Yeah. Well, I know I was kind of introduced to you through the bachelor world. Obviously that's how we kind of met each other. So I'm really interested to kind of talk to you about stuff before that. So I want to go all the way back. Your kid. I, I love this question. Cause I want to, people always have different answers. Your kid daydreaming in school about what Justin's life looks like. What what is that dream that you had as a like as a kid? Where it's like I want to be a pro athlete, I want to be a firefighter, astronaut. What was that dream? What was that vision? What did that look like for you? Oh my goodness, um, I don't even know. I I feel like there have been very distinct moments where I did want to be something for uh, like a short amount of time, but I've never really been steadfast to like any of those goals. But at one point, I. This is going to like shock people. At one point, I did want to be a country music singer songwriter. No in, way. In the eighth grade. So, yeah, I was like really inspired by Shania Twain that year, which I guess is like foreshadowing of my sexuality, you could say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just was, was like, I want to be like Shania Twain and uh, be a country singer songwriter. So that did not happen. <laughs> Were you were you very like musical grow like musically gifted growing up? Was that like your thing growing up, or was it like I right, I'm gonna start this music thing eighth grade? Let's go. Uh, I always did a lot of singing and like chorus and um, things like that. And then when I got into high school, I did like a lot of theater. And for a minute, I did think I wanted to go to school for theater. And then I was like, this is a horrible lifestyle. I don't want to be an actor. Um, which like so much respect to people who like audition and put themselves out there all the time. Like that's just not something I could do, but yeah, I, um, I've done a lot of performing back in the day. Not so much now. Now it's yeah. just like the podcast, which is like perfect. Yeah. How did, how quickly did you know, like, all right, this acting thing isn't for me because I, I still like you've always been in what I can, from what I can tell, like very involved in theater, uh, like musical theater. What, how quickly did you know? Like, I, I don't want to do that side of the, th of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, I did theater all throughout high school, and it really wasn't until senior year when I was like auditioning for or starting to audition for college programs where I was like, okay, I can't do this. Uh, like, this is just not something that I want to do. It was like very intimidating to me. And I was, I was good. But I, I looking back, I'm like, I don't think I could make it in that regard. But I like, I really cherish like all of those, I guess, oh. lessons, because I I do think it in, uh, influences, you know, what I do now in terms of like Instagram and podcasting, just because, you know, like we're, we're all kind of like putting on a show to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, gas, believe it or not. But yeah, like I, it was probably like when I was like 18 or so. Yeah. Yeah. So did you, what did you start looking for in after high school for colleges? What did that look like? What was that process like for you? Yeah, I, um, why I at that point I knew that I didn't want to be an actor but I knew I loved theater oh. so I was trying to figure out ways where I could kind of combine um, business degrees and theater degrees and there were a couple of programs but overall like it doesn't really exist and everything is like mm -hmm. so specific and not really what I had in my brain so um I tried a couple different things I still went to school to like be a theater major um at like a smaller program uh where I was gonna like create my own like theater business major mm -hmm. and then I just made it a business major and then I became a PR major no it was a communications major and then it was a PR major oh. and that's what I graduated with so it was it was honestly such a journey but it 
I look back on it and I'm like, all of this tracks because now Mm -hmm. in my day-to-day life and what I do uh, outside of that is like, it all just, all of those things are like very integral to like what I do now is like my full-time job and then like my bachelor job. Yeah. No, that's, that kind of speaks a lot to what I've said in the past on this podcast, even like I'm very fresh out of the college world. So like I, I can't maybe reflect as much as other people can because I'm like very recently out of it. But like for me, it was mostly like figuring out what I hated more than figuring out what I actually liked. Like I had a good idea of what I enjoyed, but I tried a few other stuff. Like I went in, uh, I think my senior year of high school, I was like, oh, I might be like an econ major, like learn business stuff. I was like, and then I like, I don't know what it was. I was like, I took one econ class freshman year and it was intro to econ. And like, I got an A in the class, but I hated every single second of it. I was like, I yeah. hate this. I took like a science class, hate this, hate this. And you just kind of narrow it down. You'd be like, you kind of stumble upon what you like just by figuring out what you don't like, which is like kind of backwards way to get there. But you know, I feel like that's most people's experiences. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I failed econ and had to take it like two or three <laughs> times. So I, not relatable yeah. to me, but yeah, it was, it was horrible. And that's one of the reasons I was like, I don't want to be a business major. Like, I just don't think that any of this is super applicable to my life. And it probably would have been if I had stuck it out. Like I mm. probably would be using those skill sets more um, successfully, but uh, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's a journey. Well, what was interesting for me is like, a lot of the stuff I was good at, I hated. So I was like, mm. I, I was pretty good at math. Like I could figure out math stuff, but I dreaded it. I hated every second of it. So like I was doing well and like, even like high school, I was tracked well. So I was in like the higher level math and I hated it. And all the other kids were good at it and kind of enjoyed it. And I was the outside. I was like, I'm going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to get this class done with. And people would get mad because I would like still get decent grades. I'm like, I hate this though. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So I wonder, is there anything that you were really good at growing up? You just hated? Um, uh, honestly, no. I feel like everything that I was good at, I loved because I, I don't. A lot easier. I, yeah. Well, I just like, I uh, do not like losing. And so, um, and then if I didn't, if I wasn't good at it, I didn't like it. I was, I was that brat as a catch as a child. Absolutely. I love that. Um, what do you think about theater or just even the Broadway scene, I guess that do you, what do you think appeals to you outside of just like you being performer in high school, like even on a deeper level, like, what do you think is so appealing about that scene to you? Yeah. I just think that theater is so magical it's something, I mean, Broadway is something that is, you know, there are Broadway shows playing every single day of the year, even on holidays. And I think that the reality is that like every show is so unique and so special. And it's uh, one moment in time that's never going to happen again. And, you know, realistically, yeah, I mean, probably gonna piss people off saying this, but like there are like, like, you know, being a Broadway performer, and working in, in, that, in that space in general is like really one of the most like elite things you can do in terms of like yeah. any sort of thing in the US in terms of like the NFL, um, MLB, like other, I don't like, I'm, I'm running out of acronyms, <laughs> but you know what I mean? So it's just like a very exclusive club. And, yeah. uh, but on top of that, I just think that it really has to do with just like that intimate moment like a broadway theater is Mm -hmm. usually like around a thousand if not less uh people per night per show and that's like a very cool like shared experience that is really only going to happen once um you know i was at a show last night and like the lead like his voice actually like gave out and i was like oh my gosh like i was like that's fucking crazy i've never had that happen but i was like also like and no one else in this room has also probably had that happen and it may never happen again. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just interesting. And I just, I love that feeling you get and the emotions that come with it. Do you ever get like, I get nervous at live events like that. I'm like, Oh, someone's going to like, if someone forgets a line or someone does it, I get like super nervous for the people on stage all the time. I don't know if that's yeah. just like a, my personal experience of like anxiety. I don't know. But like, I, I do you ever get like nervous or feel like, ah, uh, don't mess up, please? <laughs> um, no, honestly, no, because one, because like these are like legit professionals who are just like they do this eight times a week. Uh, they rehearse for 
weeks, sometimes months. And, and also sometimes, you know, again, when they forget things or when mistakes happen, um, you then you have that like shared experience of this really funny thing happening. Yeah. I know I saw a TikTok um, the other day about like someone in Hamilton, that's someone in the Hamilton Broadway cast created. And it was about like this huge fly that it was like literally like a massive fly and the audience could like see it. And it was flying around the cast on stage and like it became like a character in this show almost yeah. because everyone was fucking watching. Can I curse here? <laughs> yeah. I think I can, yeah. Right? You say what um, I was like, because everyone was like watching the fly. And then at one point, like the lead finally had an opportunity to kill it. So he like, you know, he like caught it and killed it with his hands. And then whatever line he was saying after was just like so perfect. So he like looked in the audience and he said the line and like yeah. everyone like lost their shit and it was like clapping and, you know, like, uh, you know, cheering. Yeah. And I, I, know, I know that's such a random example, but like what a fun, like extra shared experience all because of this like stupid fly, yeah. um, like a massive fly nonetheless. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's I think there's beauty in that. Yeah, it does seem like there's kind of like a sense of community around all that where it's like you if you're in it, you understand it. And if you're if you're not like you maybe don't appreciate it as much as you possibly should. And I'm probably in that boat where like I, I, I feel like I appreciate it and like understand it, but I also like haven't put my foot in the door where like I don't really under, understand that world as much as I could. So yeah. my question to you is how would someone like me who my, my experience is basically watching Hamilton on Disney Plus? How would <laughs> yeah. someone like me? get the foot in the door how would you recommend someone like all right go experience something like this yeah i think that okay so here's the deal like yes like the broadway actors and workers and all those people are like a community of their own but i think like the real community comes out when you're all watching the show together just mm -hmm. like if you went to like a big concert like not everyone like if i was to go to like i, I don't even know like what type of concert but if i was to go to a concert and like have the best time like I may not know any of those songs but like I can still have an amazing time and like really vibe with people and um and whatnot I think it's the same thing with theater like you just have to put yourself into experience to or give yourself the, the opportunity to experience it like buy a ticket to a show it doesn't like I mean you know uh, there's obviously different levels so uh, depending on like you know what you like and what type of music and there's really shows for everyone i mean there's rock and roll shows there's country shows there's just like classical musical theater so i think you just like put yourself out there and like see a show and like you know i think because of like the experience itself like i feel like most people enjoy it and if you don't enjoy that show like it doesn't mean you're not going to enjoy another show yeah. are you anti like turning broadway shows into movies what are your thoughts um, on those? Well, I mean, there's there's two things that you can do. One, you can like literally turn it into a movie. And then two, you can film it on a Broadway stage and stream mm -hmm. it. I think both are fantastic. I think that Broadway is like, Broadway is like a not very accessible thing. It no. is like the actual like art of Broadway happens in one place, uh, like you know, uh, in a one state and it only happens X amount of times per day, which eight times or eight times a week is a lot, but compared to like, I don't know, like if you go to like the circus or something, like yeah. there's like a million show times for that or movies. Um, and so uh, it's not very accessible. So I absolutely think that making Broadway more accessible will actually create more fans who come out and spend their money on touring productions, on community theater, on like flying out to Broadway uh, like itself. Um, and I don't actually think it'll hurt ticket sales. I think it'll actually help it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you need fans to buy tickets to things. And yeah. so if you make the content more accessible via streaming platforms, you can really like shape a whole new demographic and like audience that you just never knew was there yeah i feel like especially with covid that's become a big thing where it's like there was a moment in time where you couldn't go out and see these shows how do you make it accessible to accessible to people when they physically can't go see these shows so i think that yeah. had a big role in it um what was your have you seen tick tick boom 
the movie? Um, okay, I'm so bad. I haven't actually watched it yet. I'll, I'll, I've heard it's amazing. Incredible. Have you watched it? In, it's, it's my See? favorite movie of 2021. It's my favorite movie. There you go. So, uh, good. so See, like, good. You you have your foot in the door. Yeah. Yeah, you're we right. Just, I also love Andrew Garfield, and he's mm, incredible. And the fact he's that so he learned he learned to sing for that role, and I didn't know anything. Again, I guess my foot in the door. I didn't know anything about Jonathan Larson. I didn't know anything really about Rent, Tick, Tick, Boom, anything. And after that, after I watched that movie, I like was googling for the next like three days. I'm like, give me all the information on this person. I need to know more. It was exciting. I loved it. Did you have you watched Rent yet? No. I have Okay, so there is a Rent movie. You should watch it. Okay. It is so good. It came out like, uh, I don't know, probably 20 years ago, honestly. Maybe not that long ago. Okay. But like it was it was like 15, 20 years ago. Um, but it is so good. Um, like it's, I, I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Andrew Garfield's amazing. I saw him on Broadway for Angels in America when he did oh, that a yeah. couple years ago. It was like him and um, Nathan Lane. And they were both incredible. Um, and I actually forgot that I even saw him in it until really this year when, you know, he's obviously been getting a lot of buzz. It's the, the renaissance. Last... Yeah, the renaissance yeah. of Andrew Garfield. Yeah, it really is. It's like, it's it's wild and it's very exciting. Um, but yeah, I saw him in that and he was really fantastic. And uh, that's like a very mm -hmm. emotional, crazy show that is not good for a new theater person, but <laughs> really, really, really good performance from him. Yeah. Um, I want you to now we're kind of transition a little bit. Where are you originally from? So I'm originally from Atlanta. Okay. And then yeah. you're in New York now, right? Yeah, I live in New York. Okay. So I want you to sell me on New York because New York terrifies me just as a concept. I'm, Have you I, been? No, never. Okay. My brother, my little brother just went a while, a couple weeks ago and he loved it. But like big cities terrify me. Like I've spent a, a little time in Chicago. I like, like Chicago, but I've always said I could never live in the city. I just like. I don't like it. I don't I don't like that many people. I don't like everything together. So sell me on New York. What's the appeal? Why should I pick up my life and move to New York right now? Yeah, I mean, you know what I love about New York is and um, um, I feel like New York really is just the best of the best. So like people who move here are like incredibly ambitious. They have these like insane goals and drives and we're all like striving for and not to say that people who live elsewhere aren't like this but like that is just like mostly the caliber of people in new york like you don't really i feel like come to new york to um to not like reach your full potential basically so i feel like everyone here is just like so motivated and so i just i love that i'm so like business and work and career oriented and so i love like the competitiveness of it almost. Um, I, I love that there's just so much opportunity here for, you know, reaching your goals and transitioning companies and like finding the next best thing. Uh, it's like very millennial in that way. Um, and really like New York is very overwhelming, but you just take it piece by piece. And, you know, yes, there are millions of people that live here, but it really is still a relatively small place, like all things considered. I run into people I know all the time, I swear to God. Like, it's just literally wild. I was at like a rave on Saturday with like, literally I'm sure there was like thousands of people there over this like huge, huge space. And like, I ran into someone that I know. So like, I feel like New York is a really big playground, but you're constantly running into people you know, like there's so much to do here at Hertz. And so you're always gonna have a little bit of FOMO. I agree with that, but you kind of get over that. And then you just realize that you're gonna do what you wanna do because there is, there are too many options. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I love it. Like you're never bored here. Uh, I will say you are always broke here because <laughs> Like your money goes so quickly on all the things, but like, I truly just feel like I'm living this like never entry, never ending adventure. Um, and I know that by living here, I'm afforded so many more opportunities than people elsewhere. Yeah. Now, did you sorry, always people? Yeah. Sorry. All the Indiana <laughs> listeners here. Screw Indiana. <laughs> Midwest sucks. No. Um, what, did you always think that way? Or like when you first moved there, was there a moment or like, I can't do this. I feel like they're like, I feel like moving anywhere. You always have like the uh, initial moment of like, what am I getting myself into? 
How yeah. quickly did you transition? Was it a hard transition? Was it kind of fairly easy? Because it seems like obviously you love it and you've been there for a while. So like that's home basically. But yeah. how hard was that transition? Um, honestly, it was, it was, it's, it's a little bit challenging, but really not that bad. Like I, every chance I could get, I would come up here and I would buy a flight, stay with friends and just explore the city by myself for a weekend or a week. And so I was really used to it. Like I was used to walking around. I was used to taking the subways. Was I good at any of those things? No. But was I getting acclimated and did it take time? Absolutely. Um, you know, walking around New York by yourself can be sometimes like, not like scary, but just like, it can be overwhelming, like you said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just like picked up on it really well. And honestly, my best friend uh, moved to New York by himself uh, like a couple years prior. And mm -hmm. so him doing that I mean, I was like, if he can do it, I know that yeah. I can. Like, it was yeah. very much that mentality. And then, you know, probably uh, two years after he left, I interned in the city and I stayed with him for the summer. So I got transitioned in that way as well. And then when I moved here, like the living situation here is challenging. Yeah. It is like apartment hunting here is no joke. It is unlike any other city in the nation. Like real estate here is scary intimidating and ridiculous uh and once so once you it takes a minute to find like your footing on where you're living and like you have to live in like you know like my first year here I think I lived in like four different buildings um wow. because I just couldn't find where I wanted to and everything was so temporary and there were sublets and yada 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 and now I'm like in my own studio in a great area. I just signed my second year of the lease. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I It was a very easy transition, all but, things considered though. Yeah, it seems like you kind of ease your way into a couple of visits here and there, internship. Yeah. All, and then it was like, by the time you were there, it's like, all right, I kind of know my way around. Like you kind of yeah. worked your way in. Um, Honestly, yeah. yeah. I want to transition a little now into obviously what you're doing now with the podcast. This is, yeah. is the, I mean, that's, that's what you got going on. So I'm interested in how long did you know, or how long were you a fan of the show before you had the idea of like, you know what? I want to, I want to recap this. I want to talk about this and put myself out there. Yeah. Not long at all. I mean, I, my first episode was Rachel Lindsay's finale so okay. I watched the finale, I watched Paradise, I watched Winter Games, and then I watched like the full cycle of like, you know, um, Ari, Becca, Paradise. Oh. And then the full next year cycle. And then it was during that next year where like I started like basically just posting reactions on my Instagram, my personal yeah. Instagram. So I was like doing reactions for, um, I can't, I think I did Colton season. I'm pretty sure I did. I have to go back and look, but then I definitely did them for Hannah Brown season. I was mm -hmm. like all in for Hannah Brown season and then her paradise. Um, and you know, then at that point, and so that was like really two years, two and a half years yeah. of being a fan of the show and um at that point everyone was like oh like you should do something with these reactions they're really funny and yeah. i was like oh okay and i got a big head and so i literally like just i watched peter's premiere and then i just recorded about it right after and it was like 20 minutes of me like speaking fast and talking about how many women peter made out made out with and it was it's like the worst episode ever i leave it I, it's on my all of my streaming platforms because i think it's so fucking funny yeah um but yeah it's like it, yeah it was it was a pretty quick transition honestly yeah i i love when people leave up like old videos or like old podcast episodes i still yeah. have my my videos up from my senior year of high school which is what like six years ago now and they're atrocious like yeah. so they're so hard to watch but it's yeah. fun to keep them up because like it shows, first of all, not in like how much work you put in to like, I'm like five years later, like a couple of years later, like you've put in the work, you're consistently yeah. doing it. And it just shows improvement too, like for yourself. Like, yeah. yeah, you can go back and watch the old like first episode and be like, oh, this sucks. But then now look at what your product is now. And I think it's yeah. really cool to like have that where like, 
you're not pretending to be perfect right off the bat where some people were like, Oh, I want everything I put out to be like the best thing ever. And like a perfectionist kind of attitude. It's like, no, I feel like an audience should kind of grow with you. And like, I always think like, as long as my next show is better than the last one, I'm good. Yeah. I'm just going to keep doing, I'm going to keep making small baby steps towards where I want to be. Is it professional quality every single time? Is it my best work every time? No, but I think the goal is to get better each time. So leaving that old stuff up. Yeah. It's hard to watch. It's cringy to watch, but I think it's like almost beneficial for an audience to see like, Oh, he's, he's getting better. He's getting. Yeah. Well, and honestly, I, I, I think it's funny. And if someone wants to, give me an extra listen by listening to like my first yeah. episode. I'm like, yeah, great. Do it. Amazing. Increase my, you know, my median listen. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Like I had a, and you never know what's going to like randomly pop off or like I had an old video that just like something was trending on TikTok. Mm. So like it caused a YouTube video of mine to get like boosted on the algorithm. And I would look up like I like thousands of views overnight. I'm like, that video hasn't done anything in years. So it's yeah. just, it's weird. The internet's a weird place. So if you can leave stuff up and make money off it, go for it 100 yeah absolutely uh, what was the first moment for you where you were like oh shit like i'm i'm in this thing now like <laughs> you were like obviously reacting kind of almost as an outsider at what point did you feel like all right i'm in the door now this is real um you know what i don't even know how to answer that because i've had so many moments like that yeah. and each one kind of surpasses the next i mean for the first moment was probably well, it was the week of Tasha's finale. It was that, um, like, gosh, that was like, I think we had two episodes. We had Monday and Tuesday episodes. And then I think Christmas was like Friday or Saturday. Like yeah. so crazy that they did that to us. But I, I it was like, I, I want to say that it was like that Monday was like when I started going viral. And I'll never forget it because like literally by, you know, New Year's, I had like, 10,000, 15,000 followers from like 1,000. And then, um, but then I, I think I started to feel like really in it when I started meeting people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, that has just kind of grown on itself because obviously there's, I don't want to like, I don't want to rank anyone, but there's like, obviously big fish and there's smaller fish like there is yeah. everything yeah. and like I've gotten the opportunity to like really like hang out and get close with some relatively like big fish in Bachelor Nation yeah. and so every time those happen I'm really grateful but I'm also just like what is going on yeah. um and those those moments become like the new moments mm -hmm. so yeah as uh, I always feel like you're like a where's Waldo of like bachelor nation. Like you're just, <laughs> you just pop up. I feel like you're always there. Like every day I yeah. hop on Instagram and it's like, Oh, he's with another, another one. There's a, you're, you're everywhere. I like, do you get tired of it? You're like, ah, I want to take a break. Like, I want to get out of this. Um, no, because it really is fun. And because I've like been able to like develop so many amazing relationships. Um, and you know, some of them are absolutely, uh, like a little bit more social media transactional, but then like the people that I get to like meet in person and actually like connect with and have like conversations with have been so good. And it's not, it's not work at all. Like it's really just a fun time and I'm truly just being myself. And so I'm not putting on like any sort of, you know, charade for like the alums. Um, but yeah, like I definitely do feel like my social life because I everyone I do have real friends outside of Bachelor Nation I promise you but like I my my schedule has like gotten a little bit crazier this summer because like I'm my circle of like relationships has expanded um and so it's it's been interesting yeah uh two-part question here okay. have you ever uh has have you met someone that is completely different than what you thought they would be and then second mm. question, has someone ever called you out for like talking shit on them on the podcast? <laughs> or were you like, were you like super mean to them or drag them a little bit and they called you out on it? Um, ooh, okay, good questions. Okay, so I don't think I'm really ever mean to anyone. Um, so no one has called me out about that. Um, so I don't, I don't think so. No one's called me out on it, but I'm also, again, I'm just not that mean to yeah. people. And I, I feel like when I call people out, like they deserve it. Like it's, <laughs> they, they understand why they're being called out. It's not like yeah. coming out of the blue. Um, and 
I also, I mean, I don't know, maybe, I guess you could potentially say Shanae though. Actually, okay, we'll say Shanae because like I obviously called Shanae out last season, but I also like defended her at the reunion a little bit, Um, but she didn't follow me. So, you know, we can take that as like a a negative. Shade, yeah, the one shade. Um, But like, I feel like she'll refollow for Paradise. So we'll see. uh, what was the other? What was the first? Oh, is there part? anyone who was completely different than what you expected them to be like? Mm. Um. Oh gosh, yeah, absolutely. So many people. Just because we're all obviously seeing only so much of a person mm-hmm. on TV and social media, and so it's not like anyone was different. But it was nice to see, um, to see their full like, you know, like three hundred and sixty degree like you're a real human being type of yeah. moment. So like, I'll, I think I have two examples. So Ashley Spivey, um, she is like such a good human being. I adore her. She's like uh, an advocate for so many things. Um, but I was like, not sure what to expect from her in terms of like her personality, but she is so much fun. And so there is this like really like kind of, you know, serious advocate side to her, but there's also just like this amazing personality um, that is just like so bubbly and fun. And I actually didn't watch her season. So everything I knew about her Mm -hmm. was just her Instagram account. Um, But she really surprised me in the best way possible. Just like, you know, a million times like better of a person that I thought she even was, which I knew she was going to be a great person, but I just wasn't expecting all of that personality. And it was fantastic. Um, And then um, honestly, like pilot Pete really surprised me. I got to like Hmm. hang out with him this um, I've like met him a couple of times, but like full transparency every time has been like, we with both of us have been intoxicated. So this was our first time meeting each other sober and then getting intoxicated. And (laughs) um, uh, he really surprised me. I like, you know, he's like, in terms of like looks and everything, like, um, you know, (laughs) he's still like, he's he's the same in that regard. But like, it was really interesting talking to him because there is so much more to him. And he has like this very interesting sense of humor um, that is like very like subtle and you almost don't like realize that he's making a joke and then he fully is. Uh, And he's also like a really big theater fan. So we bonded over that. Um, But yeah, like Pete really surprised me, honestly, in like, in a really good way. Yeah. So um, I still like, don't think he was a good bachelor. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Um, (laughs) But you know, he, he's a really kind, funny person. And um, I don't think we got enough of that. Yeah. Now I know you're probably not going to answer this question, but I'm going to ask it. I'm going to ask it anyways. Who's okay. the biggest dick? Who's someone you met who was just like an <laughs> asshole? Um, hmm. I don't. I don't think that I've. I haven't. I haven't met some. Okay, I'll say it like this. Yeah. I haven't met someone who has been a dick, but I have interacted with alums who are flaky as fuck and. Okay. Let's that's, get come on, give me the names. And that's why we didn't meet in person. And that's happened a couple of times. It's not even just one person. I will say that. I will say that. You're thinking gonna, of one. You're thinking of one right now. I I'm thinking of like two people, maybe three. So okay, fine. We'll get those names eventually. <laughs> um uh one more question before we get into kind of previewing this upcoming season, which is sneaking up, by the way. All yeah. of a sudden it's on like Monday. I feel Crazy. like the promo behind it hasn't been great. I feel like they should like promote it a little bit more, but maybe that's just me being ignorant and not watching enough. But before we get into that, I want a hypothetical for you. I'm going to give you the chance. You can uh, create your own season. You're the lead. You get to pick who your host is. Oh, wow. Three potential contestants and what your hometown date would look like. Oh my goodness. Okay. And should I pick the contestants from like people who have been on the show, I assume? Uh, no, anyone. It'd be celebrities. It could be like any, any person that you want, what, whoever you would want, you think you would get along with. Oh my gosh. This is so difficult. Okay. So, okay. So I am going to stick with alums for who I would want to be on the show because I think that's more fun for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so, oh gosh. Okay. Who do I want to be the host? That's, that's so tough. Um, 
I, there's so many people that I really, really enjoy. Um, you know, part of me thinks, part of me is thinking Tasha. Mm. Um, part of me is also thinking Rachel Lindsay. Um, and then I was going to say Jesse because we all know that I love Jesse. <laughs> But I like feel like Jesse should just be on my season. Yeah. Um, like if I have the power to do that, like so. Okay, so we're gonna make Jesse the first person on my Go. season. All right. Um, which is like, wow, what an age discrepancy from everyone else I'm about to pick. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we'll go with Jesse. Um, oh gosh, this is so so difficult. Um. I oh gosh, it's also hard because like who would I want to be on there? Cause like, I guess I am looking for marriage and yeah. this. Yeah. Well, if you're in it for the right reasons, we don't know. We haven't. Yeah. I don't know that, that I, yet. I don't know that I am though. Cause <laughs> I, I was going to say clay, but I was like, I don't really feel like that's like clay's in mo right now. Um, yeah. So, but like, I am like, okay, clay fantasy suites. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah. Um, but I don't really know if he's like, would be like a, uh, my spouse in this gotcha hmm. okay so i'm gonna say i will say oh fuck this is so difficult <laughs> i love this i'm like really struggling and my face is beat red everyone um okay oh gosh i just have to like work through some of these people all right i'm gonna say potential people out loud and then can okay. we narrow them down yeah yeah is this is this too much no i love it okay um, all right. So other people I'm thinking about clay. I mean, clay's like never off the table. So clay, mm -hmm. Jesse, I'm thinking James, James, okay. the sweetheart. Yeah. I love the leg, the leg sleeve. Um, I'm thinking Thomas. Okay. Um, I'm thinking Rodney. Love Rodney. Love Rodney. Um, I'm trying to think backwards as well. Uh, Ooh, I am. I am thinking Brian. I mean, he's married, but like, this is a hypothetical. Yeah, so hypothetical. Like, yeah we're not? living in fantasy land here. Yeah, Brian, uh, Dr. Abs. Um, who else would I be into? Let's think, let's think. Um, oh, Rick too. Okay, yeah. Now you gotta pick three. Oh God, that's so difficult. So Jesse, I'll give you, I think, I think it sounds like Clay is in there. Yeah, but I just like Clay would be like a fantasy sweet pick. Yeah, you know well, I mean? yeah, you're not gonna pick all three of them. Yeah, so that's you, true. you know he's gonna yeah. <laughs> and then who's true. your third? Okay. I think it would be James. Okay. All right. Yeah. Clay, James, and Jesse. Although, like, solid. I hate to leave. So I feel like I. Oh gosh, that's tough. I feel like I. I feel like I'm thinking with my dick and not my head. Honestly, <laughs> is the issue because in my brain I'm like I need to put Thomas in there because Thomas is yeah. like actual husband material. Yeah. I think that's how most leads have thought in the past. So I, I think know. You're, you're fitting in with the narrative here. Okay, so we'll just we'll 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 call those my penis picks. Okay. Right. Um, God, I honestly can't believe this is my brand. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what Jesse okay. would be. Jesse would be a fantasy. I feel like out of those three, I would probably go with James, though. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I like I that. I know. I, yeah. But I feel like Thomas is, like, the actual, like, this would be my husband. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, What's your hometown date look like? Oh, good call. Oh, gosh. I don't even know. Um, That's always I mean, the hardest question. Like, I don't, like, I don't know what, if someone, if I was on this show and had a hometown date, I have no idea what I would do. Like, I don't know yeah. what I do now without dating in front of a camera. I don't know where I go now for dates. Like, I don't know what I would do for a hometown. Yeah, I just, I don't even, I'm also debating whether I would want my hometown to be in New York or cool. if I would want it to be back home in Georgia. Yeah. Um, because like, you know, I have like a very interesting like uh, relationship with my like home area mm -hmm. in terms of like, Nah, like I never really fit in. That's why I moved to New York. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not I'm not entirely sure like what we would do in Georgia. Um, like, uh, yeah, I just I really do, I really don't know. So my parents do own a flower shop. So maybe we would do something with that and like go to the okay. flower shop. But then also that takes away from like maybe we would like go to the flower shop first, and then there's this like. A really good restaurant across the street so maybe we'd go to lunch there and then i feel like it'd be fun to do something silly after that like maybe putt putt 
Okay. I love putt. I think putt putt's a great date. I've always yeah. thought that. Always thought that's a great because it's like you get a little competitive spirit going on, a little jabs back and forth. And yeah. it, and you're like exercise, not like exercise, but like you're active. Yeah, I think that's exactly. a big part. You don't want to sit there and like over dinner and talk. the whole Right. Time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So maybe that. Yeah. And then also, like, I guess we could I don't know, maybe we could do something like theater related downtown, like take yeah. a tour of like the big regional theater. Um. So, yeah. OK, so that's, that's good. That's a, that's yeah. a good date. That's, we'll yeah. do we'll do that as like the hometown versus New York. Okay. All right. Perfect. Very um. Hard. Now into this upcoming season with Gabby mm. and Rachel. Yeah. I I've kind of avoided a lot of stuff about this. I don't even know like how, what what the even structure of it is. What do you know? How do you like? How is it going to work with two bachelorettes? What's the structure like, or what's their idea? I guess as far as you know. Yeah. So I don't actually. So I know the structure of, of the show. For the most part, I don't know any spoiler. I'm spoiler free for uh, Gabby and Rachel. I know almost everything, everything for Paradise. Paradise. Um, like Paradise is a very different conversation. But for Gabby and Rachel's season, what I've heard is that they will, I believe, do the rose ceremony together for the first episode. And then mm-hmm. after that, once they get to know each other, the people, the guys a little bit better, they will divide them up into Gabby's guys and Rachel's guys. So mm-hmm. Gabby will only have dates with her guys. Uh, Rachel will only have dates with her guys. They will only give their own guys roses. Um, but as we saw in the like new trailer, um, there's obviously going to be some sort of drama with that. We see like yeah. this one guy, James, Rachel apparently offers him a rose and this is like in a trailer. This isn't a spoiler. Yeah. This is like already given to us, but he's like, Oh, I'm actually here for Gabby. So, you know, <sighs> little things like that. I've, there's a potential for someone to maybe change lanes halfway through, you know, obviously mm-hmm. there are no rules in this show. I know we all like have yeah. their bachelorisms, but there really are no rules. And so this season is just like any other, there are again, no rules and like, you know, there's going to be some guys going back and forth, but Rachel and Gabby have said that no one has come between them. Um, And so it will definitely, I really, I know a lot of people are concerned that they're going to pit the two women against each other. I don't think they are. I think that they have learned their lesson and they're really going to empower them. And that's why we're getting this whole narrative of the two best friends. Yeah. That's good. That's because that's my biggest concern. I was like, don't I love both these women. Do not put them together. Don't put yeah. them against each other because then I will hate ABC even more. Um, that's a question. Do you think ABC hates you? Because I think ABC <laughs> hates me. Um, so you know, that's a tricky situation. I think that um there's a lot of factors. I, I don't I don't think producers love me. I know that the press team does not like me. Yeah. Um, I think producers are pretty mixed. Um, I have a couple people that follow me. I have a couple people that only drop in when certain things, when I, there are producers that do look at my stories when I'm hanging out with certain people. Mm-hmm. Um, or if the event is big enough, I'll say. Um, but other than that, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't get approved for anything. Uh, yeah. And that's something I've like learned to accept. But I think they like me more than I originally thought. But I'm also like, I, you know, I, I speak out on production quite a bit. So I know that I'm not going to be their favorite person. Um, but I also realize they know that uh, content creators bring a lot of value to their franchise. And so... Yeah you know whether they like really hate us is like i feel like kind of up for debate because we're helping stimulate their lack of marketing efforts that's true yeah um so you obviously don't know any spoilers for rachel and gabby season which i i mean i think that's how is that how you prefer to watch a season having no spoilers going in blind or would you like to know a little bit what's going on um like I will see things just because they pop up, yeah. but it really just depends. I think in the past, I did like to know certain spoilers. Um, mainly like what I like to know is the formatting of the episode mm-hmm. because that kind of helps me 
plan out my stuff a little bit better in terms of will there be a rose ceremony at the end of this will someone go home uh those sorts of things but as far as like the only spoiler that i really don't want to know is who the end person is um but other than that like i try to be mostly spoiler free but it's hard yeah uh, it's very hard I, I block a lot of people on twitter during the heat of it because the stuff always comes up um yeah as for paradise though you say you know basically everything that happens i'm not going to ask you to spoil anything for me yeah um actually i might but uh i'm wondering they haven't announced the cast yet like the roster who's all going to be on have they no they literally just start filming at the end of last week so this is they stop this, okay. yeah they're they're probably still in mexico like wrapping up everything like producers gotcha. and you know all those like the the uh, everyone yeah so I don't think this is too big of a spoiler. Can you give us some insight on who we're going to see? Um, what do you allow? I don't know. I don't know what the technicality is here. I don't know what you're allowed to say, what you aren't. You're your yeah. own person. You can say whatever the hell you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where um, I have to be careful what I now I'm at a point now. I do have to be careful with what I say because people are telling me things in confidence. Yeah, you're friends so, with these people, so. That's yeah, tough. so I have to be uh, cognizant of what I'm saying, but um, yeah, I'll I'll say a couple people. Um, spoiler alert! Yes, yes. Um, if you don't want to know, if you don't want to know, stop listening right now. Blah blah blah. <laughs> right. um, you're definitely gonna see Andrew Spencer. I know that's like not a surprise. Um, you're gonna see Brendan. Um, you're gonna see. Um, gosh, who else? Wait, you're Brendan. Gonna- which, uh, which like one? from Michelle's season. Oh wait, is it? Bra- I'm sorry, Brandon. 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 Okay. Brandon. I was like, I was so like sorry. Wait. I was like, I know Brandon. I don't think no, he's no, no. the Canadian um, Brandon. <laughs> no, 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 different one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Bra- Brandon's definitely gonna be there. Um, you're gonna see. Uh, Shanae is gonna be there. Mm. Um, and oh, I bet. I think I. I'm almost if- positive. Serene and um. Who Teddy. else? Yes, Teddy. They yeah. have to be there. I, I just like based off their social media, like you can tell. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing. Like it's it's not like it's you know rocket science, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean both of them will be there. And I will say, if you if you're not a fan of Shanae, which most people are, like honestly, just like suck it up because yeah. you're gonna be disappointed a long time if you're complaining about her at the very beginning. I'll say that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Is that enough? Okay. I'm yeah, like, that's I don't good. Know. No, that's good. Else. That's fine. Um, yeah. Do you want to give a little, I guess, do your own little tease for the season since, you know, is, is it going to be a good season? Or should I be excited for Paradise? Yeah, I think you should be excited for Paradise. Um, I think they're trying to up the ante. I don't like how they're upping the ante personally, hmm. but there are a lot of uh, twists and turns. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who uh, I'm like debating whether I want to say this or not. I've talked to a lot of people and, um, who are on paradise and a lot of them are not thrilled with how things turned out. Um, production was, on their bullshit yeah. um and so a lot of people were disappointed um and i think that a lot of people are going to be like oh i know who he's talking about but you don't um and but there and there are going to be a lot of random alums there are some really fun wild cards that pop up and are really going to surprise some people yeah. especially if you've been watching the franchise for a while there are like some veterans that pop up that are honestly like i think a little bit iconic um so i'm really excited for two women in particular to be on the show um yeah sweet so i think it's gonna be a great season it's gonna be messy like the mess is real that's good that's the problem is like when it's bad for the actual contestants and productions on their bullshit, it's usually good for us. <laughs> I know. Which is, it's like a catch 22. It's like, you feel terrible for them. Cause they're kind of fucking with like their actual lives, but yeah. like it makes for good TV. So I'm like, I don't know how where I stand on this line. And obviously you're in the midst of it a little bit more than I am, obviously a lot more than I am. Um, yeah. So you, you kind of have to be, like 
find like tread that line of like this will be really good for me and for content but also I feel terrible for you as a person yeah that's like the hardest part about paradise and I haven't really had this happen um is that like I'm friends with a lot of people who are on paradise and Mm -hmm. um and you know I've I've talked to like a very wide plethora of people not even just my closer friends um but it it is going to be really interesting recapping this season knowing so many of the people and having met so many of the people um, because I will obviously know more than what (laughs) they're showing. Um, And so it really just depends like what they decide to show. And then there might be moments like where I really just can't say anything because I can't, I don't want like, you know, the person who's on TV to get sued. Um, So it's, it's a really um, weird dynamic to be in, which is like why I'm like overthinking everything I'm telling you right now anyway. (laughs) Um, But I'm excited to kind of like, um, uh, I'm excited to wade through those like very un, Mm -hmm. uh, uncharted waters. So to speak. Yeah. No, I'm excited to get back into the swing of things. Obviously we had a, good run there in 2021 where it was oh nonstop goodness. and you couldn't you couldn't look uh, turn your head without seeing more bachelor bachelorette content so it was nice to have a break but i'm good i'm ready to be back I'm ready to be back in the thick of things so i'm excited for that one last question for you before we wrap up um this question asks everyone it's kind of deviating from where anything we're just talking about but what gets you up in the morning you can answer it however you want um oh my gosh i don't even know i am like i'm not i'm that person that has like five snoozes so honestly not very much um i'm like always i'm always late to work um so this is like a horrible question for me um but i think like what what gets me up in the morning is is honestly like um like i'm very driven by like the idea of like making my parents proud um and so i think that's like honestly probably what it is like i mean moving here was like such a gamble and I'm creating a life for myself here and I'm doing a lot of amazing things. Um, but I'm like constantly trying to up that. What else can I do? How else can I monetize and make money? How, what else can I do to like set myself up for a better future? And then also a future where I can like give back to my parents. And so, yeah, I think it's it's honestly them. It's like making them proud and it's kind of like giving back in that like very full circle moment you know yeah no that's awesome i love that um well thank you so much for coming on i appreciate i'm glad we were finally able to do this um and thank you for everything seriously like whether it's just like by example or just even when you've been able to talk i've learned a lot from you and just like how you conduct yourself and how you present yourself and it's really cool so uh, yeah thanks again for coming on i hope you hope you had fun thank you thank you for having me i know it was it was actually amazing because now we i've been on you've yeah. been on my podcast and i've been on yours yeah so so now we, we don't have to talk again we can just yeah this, this yeah. is this, this is, is it. basically it it was so nice talking to you please yeah. delete my number i'm gonna nope. block you on um all the socials <laughs> and uh no thank you so much yeah. for having me and um thank you for your kind yeah. words and oh. i'm i'm like I'm, I promise I'm like just as big of a fan. I think you do like, you do like very different things for me. And I'm always yeah. just like, how is he making another fucking TikTok? <laughs> yeah.